what happens to the database of millions of people who have been scanned at a certain stage of their lives? And how far can the government use that information about you? In France, the problem has been resolved more or less swiftly, thanks to a constitutional ban that prevents governments from collecting information on citizens. So will the French stand the test of this raging world phenomenon? And how truly far are we from the sinister world of George Orwell's 1984? After all, Big Brother is watching you. That was for Up to Date from Paris, France, Hossein El Kadri. And welcome back, dear viewers. Thank you very much, Qusay Al Qadri. I mean, I like the term when you said then Big Brother is watching. Well, that's uh, something that's happening worldwide. Everybody is watching, especially when it comes to a government that's got a security system. We're talking here in the studio with Mr. Khaled Al Amri, who's, uh, let's say, a general manager, who is a general manager of one of the major companies here, caring about the AFIS technology. As well, from Dubai, we do have with us Mr. Ibrahim Khayat, a strategic and consultant. Uh, Mr. Khaled, before the break, we did talk about the AFIS technology. Yet, uh, um, uh, Kosai did uh, get a topic there which is a whole government, a whole country implementing such thing. It will take time. It's not an easy instant thing for a country to, let's say, to implement within its uh, citizens. If you're in Saudi Arabia, for example, you're talking about millions of people that you've got to Im input into an FS system. How long will it take to such system to take effect? And if you're, if you're talking about a database only for the criminals, and how secure is the system to implement? No, actually we can talk about uh, database for criminals, and also there's an implementation which we call civil APHIS. For civil APHIS is for the uh, civilians. And uh, if we put in use tomorrow that, you know, all the national ID are invalid, everybody goes and changes his uh, ID, Everybody will go and do Actually, the new ID comes with the. F uh, you do have put a four fingers print inside of it. Um, it I am not aware of it. I'm uh, still I did it myself. Sorry. So you did four. Yeah, four fingers. Uh, three, sorry, three okay, fingers. So they're collecting and a pin number. Yes, they're doing civil efforts then, uh, probably, uh, to collect these evidences in the United States. Uh, they collect those evidence and then uh, let's say the, the F FBI database uh, uh, if someone has a property like you know he's renting his uh, house or is renting a, a building uh, and one uh, person comes and try to uh, you know apply for the rent then he can you know just go to one of the uh, agencies uh, you know connected with this uh, the FBI and then submit his fingerprint to do a credit check on him you know, so if, if, if he's a criminal or if he was uh, convicted of uh, any uh, crime before, it will show up in, in his records. So it, it is very important actually to start doing that. For the uh, criminal side of uh, the system, uh, you know, it is, uh, it is very crucial to, to have the database. And the way we do it is to employ, employ many uh, people just to scan all the fingerprints available now. I mean, we, we hear nowadays, we hear about lots of, uh, you know, uh, robberies, uh, yes. house robberies, yeah. you know, uh, company robberies. Uh, they all come maybe, with fingerprints. Yeah. And then, well, just uh, a month back, uh, our office in, in, in Jeddah, you know, some robbers, they got into the, the, the office and they broke all the uh, doors and they, you know, tried to steal something. Uh, they didn't find, you know, they were looking for money, I guess, because they didn't take the big computers because they, they're not worth anything, you know, mm -hmm. when you buy computer technology changes. But the thing is, if we collect and we uh, actually uh, submit all these fingerprints into a system, I think it's just a matter of how many people we will employ to do the job. But then we will have, you know, a big database, and this database can be searched by police department, by, you know, uh, different government agencies to, uh, you know, uh, have quick result on uh, certain cases they have. It's, it's not a quick result if you're talking about a country, because you're talking about a million fingerprints, that's the minimum number, and you want to search one of a million. If each one of them takes five minutes of recognition, analyzing a fingerprint to get matches... And that's why we have cold cases. Right. We called cold cases. Uh, Je the Jefferson County investigator uh, called uh, Cheryl Moore, uh, she identified uh, the Jane Doe murder victim received, uh, you know, uh, an award for her uh, research on that topic. Uh, it was, I think, for 17 years. 
and the case was you know considered you know uh, a lost just abandoned, case. a lost yes. case and then uh, she uh, gathered some uh, evidence and she took a support from experts in 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 the fingerprint who uh, captured the fingerprint evidence latent fingerprint evidence they had and they uh, scanned it or imported the fingerprint image into the Sajim uh, software and then uh, they tried to mm. mark some certain uh, certain characteristic in the in that fingerprint and then they submitted the fingerprint different times not from the first time different times and each time or each uh, you know after each period the system is upgraded the Sajim they're upgrading their you know software they're you upgrading the algorithm and, and the algorithm to to other and they're giving more yes. facilities to mark the fingerprint and to make the image you know more presentable more uh, accurate for for a search so after a couple of tries they were able to identify uh, the criminal after 17 years of that case